welcome everybody to the U.S. Army's best warrior competition here at Fort Lee, Virginia. I'm Army Sergeant, I'm Army Staff Sergeant Ocon Scott. I'll be commentating here live for you over the web live stream. Um, today is the fifth day, day five of the Army Best Warrior Competition. We have our competitors stretching out right now for the much anticipated combatives tournament. So th that'll begin in a few minutes here. We'll have that, we'll carry that live and do a play by play for you. As you can see, it's a full crowd. We have the stands are full. We have uh, VIPs, the Sergeant Major of the Army will also be here. I'm going to uh, bring on our combatives expert here. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? How you doing? My name is Staff Sergeant Richard Wells. I'm from Fort Bragg. I'm one of the Modern Army Combatives instructors down in Fort Bragg. So. What's going on today here? So right now what's going on is our fifth day of the Best Warrior Competition. Right now they're going to compete in a Standard Rules Combatives Tournament, uh, which is basically just going to be an exhibition of standing grappling and ground uh, jujitsu techniques. How are the, uh, the opponents paired up? Uh, they're going to be paired up close to size, but the NCOs are going to be taking on the NCOs, the soldiers are going to be taking on the soldiers. All right, excellent. So you'll be giving us the play-by-play -play a little later on. Hey, I'll, I'll, there, be, right? I'll be sticking around and uh, trying, to, trying to keep you up on what's going on, yeah. All right, we'll see you back here in a little bit. Thank you. All right, so uh, as, as you can see, the competitors are stretching out right now. This will begin in a few minutes. Uh, we'll be bringing to you live. As the tournament goes on, as the winner's bracket and the loser's bracket, there can only be yeah. Well, today we have 26 soldiers. Uh, there's 13 commands. We have 13 NCOs and 13 junior enlisted soldiers competing for the title of NCO of the Year and Soldier of the Year. So I'm going to... Uh, we have the Installation Management Command, U.S. Army Forces Command, also uh, Army Materiel Command, U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command, U.S. Army Pacific Command, the National Capital Region, the 8th U.S. Army, U.S. Army Europe Command. We also have the U.S. Army Special Operations Command, as well as the U.S. Army Space and Missile Defense Command. Not to mention, of course, the U.S. Army Reserve and the U.S. Army National Guard. So all 13 commands are represented here today at this combatives tournament. Let's see. All right, right now we have warming up. We have Staff Sergeant Jonathan Castillo with U.S. Army Forces Command. He is a, uh, at Fort Polk NCO Academy against the Staff Sergeant Samuel Winslow, U.S. Army. Yeah, this is dude, 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 don't ignore them. This is for the U.S. Army Special Operations Command, Charlie Company, 3rd Battalion, 10th Special Forces Group. So they are going to battle it out right now. And here on the other mat, we have uh, Sergeant James Burns at the 615th Military Police Company. He's representing the U.S. Army Com uh, Europe versus Sergeant Christopher uh, Cusho. He's with the 98th Expeditionary Signal Battalion representing the U.S. Army Reserve. No, 
We've already done it. We've already finished. Wearing the blue belt is Sergeant uh, Couchot. Wearing the red belt is Sergeant Burns. Explain to us the, the difference in the belts and, and the point system and how these are uh, tabulated. Okay, yeah, what's going on is we put a blue and a red belt on and the referee will have a, a corresponding blue and red wristband. So whenever the red person scores points, he'll hold up the red wristband hand and indicate what kind of points are given. Right now for a takedown, if he has a takedown to a dominant position, he'll get four points. If he takes down to a non-dominant, which is the guard, which the, is the position they're in right now, he'd end up getting three points. Now. If the man on top with the legs wrapped around him passes away and breaks that guard position, he'll get another three points for a sweep. So, so right now they're in a scramble. They're not getting any points for the scramble. There's no one really in a dominant position. You can still get submission attempts from a non-dominant position or in the scramble, but they're not going to get any points. What, uh, what level of combatives are we at right now here? Right now, in a standard rules competition, you're normally at a level one. Uh, the referees are level three and four to referee a tournament of this, of this level. But these competitors, they're all mixed levels right now. But the competition that we're running is a standard rules competition. And now he's attempting an arm bar. If he can get that arm pulled out, that's a pretty good submission right there. He almost tapped, but he transitioned out and kept rolling through. He's got that arm locked in pretty good. Now, if he was to roll over on top, flatten out and go belly down, he'd have a pretty good submission in there. But the man uh, getting attacked right now is doing a pretty good scrambling, pretty, pretty good job scrambling. See, and he went from an arm bar, now he's in the dominant position on top. Uh, what does that signify? That, that pound right there means there's 10 seconds left in the round. You're going to see the timekeeper throw out the, the towel right there, and that stops the match. So now, since there was no submission, we're going to go to the judge's scorecard and see who had the most points to, to win that match. And let's see who the winner is. All right, looks like Sergeant James Burns from U.S. Army Europe, representing U.S. Army Europe. No. Looks like it's Sergeant Christopher Cruchot, the 98th Expeditionary Signal Battalion. United States Army Reserve took that. Now we're going to go over to the other match. Over here again, we have uh, Staff Sergeant Jonathan Castillo versus... Staff Sergeant Samuel Winslow. All right, 10 seconds left in this match. And the judges have called time. All right, we'll see who the winner of this match is because there was no submission. So this will be points tally. Winner by points. That is Staff Sergeant Castillo representing U.S. Army Forces Command. Winner by points.
Sorry, mate. Major, uh, we're, we're we streaming this live uh, via the internet. Can I ask you, how is it going so far over here, Commander Sergeant Major? I think it's going great. You know, great competitors. Everybody's doing well. A lot of motivation, determination. I tell you, this is the best way to round this event off the past whole week. These soldiers been out here competing. At the end of the day, all of them winners. But all I can see here is just the never quit, nonstop attitude. I tell you, that's the greatest, man. Cool. Would you say this is the, one of the most anticipated events of, uh, of the competition? Yes, one, one of the uh, one of them. I think all of them is a uh, is a high ex expectation, anticipation. But I tell you, this here is what we're like the culminating event. If that's one to see, you know, one of these shows want to say who who's the macho, who's the most macho person at the end. But I tell you, at the end of the day, all of them winners. But you going to walk away with one, right? Four. Cool. Thank you, Command Sergeant Major. We're going to go over here and talk to uh, Sergeant Cushel. How's it going, Sergeant Cushel? How are you doing? It's uh, running on fumes right now, so <laughs> I feel hot. Uh, did you feel you did well? Yeah, I, uh, I, I know like all these competitors are skilled in pretty much everything, but uh, Oh, hey there. All right. Oh, you're good. All right, thank you very much, Sergeant Kusha. That was a good win. We appreciate that. All right. Let's see. Here. Looks like we got Sergeant First Class Stackpole versus Williams. That's Sergeant First Class Chad Stackpole. He is uh, representing the National Capital Region with the headquarters, headquarters company, 4th Battalion, 3rd Infantry Regiment. And he's ver that's versus Sergeant Douglas McBroom, Army Materiel Command. Sergeant Stackpole is in the red belt. Sergeant McBroom is in the blue belt. Uh-oh. Oh, the referee has called time. Looks like we've called a, a medic out here. There's a little bit of blood. But it looks like he's going to survive it. I'm going to take a break. Let's swing on over to the other side. We have uh, PFC Williams, kind of the young superstar of the competition. And he's uh, going against, or went against, Staff Sergeant Raymond Santiago, U.S. Army Training and Doctor Command. And it looks like Staff Sergeant Santiago took it in the blue belt. Stretch it out, Ray. Good job. Well. So uh, they stopped the event over here because of uh, uh, some blood, is that right? Right, yeah. Anytime we get a competitor that starts to bleed, we're going to stop the match at a neutral position. We're going to get the medics to come in, clean it up. You know, we want to make sure that the match is sanitary still. Once they get to a clean position, everything, all, all the mats are cleaned up, we're going to restart them just like we did. Right there, he's going for a guillotine choke. If he can lock that in, it wouldn't matter if he got the takedown or not. He ended up letting it go, and the blue competitor ends up in side control. Safety is always a pertin, uh, in part, important part of the tournament, but an uh, important part of Army training in general. Uh, we always want to make sure the competitors are safe. He, uh, he was attempting an arm bar. He was in a bad position. That referee is going to stop it. The referee there is there for their safety. That's his main purpose. So it's fierce, it's competitive, but it's still safe. Safety is utmost, always.
We had the audience, the sponsors, people cheering their, their competitor on. Referee will make sure they stay on the mat. All right, looks like there's more blood. The referee is going to stop the match. They're going to do another safety check. Timeout. The medic is back out there. Again, that's uh, Sergeant First Class Chad Stackpole in the red belt. He is with the National Cap. He's representing the National Capital Region with the headquarters, headquarters company, Fourth Battalion, Third Infantry Regiment. That's the Old Guard. And in the blue belt is Sergeant Douglas McBroom, the 690th Transportation Detachment, representing the Army Material Command. And they're going to restart the match. Ten seconds left. All right, the judges have called time. All right, looks like Sergeant McBroom has won this competition. over to the other mat. Looks like we have a submission. This is winner by submission. Competitors are always friendly, of course. Which Blue Belt has won it. All right, looks like specialist Blaze Corbin. He won that round. How you doing, First Sergeant Green? Yeah, you doing? Good. Uh, uh, what unit are you with, First Sergeant? Uh, headquarters and Headquarters Command Combined, Arms Support Command. How headquarters, you, Headquarters Company. Dude. Right. How do you feel about the tournament so far? Um, it's awesome. Uh, it kind of culminates uh, what we're doing here on the Best Warrior Competition. Uh, of course, the competition is to challenge adaptability, uh, critical thinking, and, and uh, innovation in soldiers, and also uh, their ability to uh, perform in combat under stress, so uh, this this is an awesome event. And how do you feel uh, this kind of event is important for basic soldiering skills, uh, the modern Army combatants program? Well, of course, we, in best case scenario, uh, when we're attacked by the enemy, uh, we never want to go to the ground. However, however it does happen. Hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat is a reality of uh, deployment, uh, today's deployment, so it's, it's, it's critical that non-commissioned officers know how to defend themselves um, when, without a weapon. Uh, it's critical for them to know how to not only defend themselves, but also train their subordinate soldiers uh, prior to deployment. Just one more thing that the Army is talking about within uh, non-commissioned officers being multifunctional. Well, thank you very much, First Sergeant. We appreciate it. All right. Here we 
go. They're shaking on it before they begin this match. Fast takedown. Here in the red belt, we have uh, Staff Sergeant Sean Swint with 8th U.S. Army. And he's with uh, Bravo Company, 1st Battalion, 38th Field Artillery Regiment. He's a native out of Webster, Texas. And in the blue belt, we have uh, Sergeant John Colonares out of the 8th U.S. Army. He's uh, with the 30, he's with the military, he's an MP with the 532nd Military Intelligence Battalion. And he's out of uh, U.S. Army Garrison, Yongsun, Korea. All right, uh, can you explain to us uh, how, like, uh, how, when competitors go off to the side, uh, what happens? And do they stop the fight, and, and who determines the position that they come back on when every start? All right, so when we have the red tape around the outside, that's our out-of-bounds area. It's our safety area to keep them on the cushion mat. So when they start getting close to that out-of-bounds area, the referee is going to wait for a neutral position. If there's a submission being attempted, he's going to let them keep going. But as long as there's a neutral position, right now they're in a scramble. He'll wait till he can see it. He'll put hands on both the competitors, stop them in place, move them back to the middle of the mat, put them in the same exact position. So he's got to look and see where the hands were, where the body positions were, and reset them in the same exact position back in the middle in a safe area. All right, that sounds fair. <laughs> uh, what's happening right now? It looks like he's going for uh, some sort of triangle. He really doesn't have him in the right position. All the guy on top has to do is step over and pull his arm out and it looks like he can clear that leg. How many minutes these matches up, uh, last? Each mat in this competition is a three minute bout. In a normal, normal competition, normal army combatives, we usually have six minute uh, bouts in the standard rules competition. But due to the large number of competitors and the short amount of time we have, we had to decrease it to three minutes. So it's uh, one round and three minutes. One round, three minutes. This is a double elimination tournament. So everybody was going to have a chance to fight at least two times. If you lose, you had a chance to fight again. You can win your way back into the tournament. But two losses and you're out. Thank you. All right, looks like we're going to have a winner here. Like it is Sergeant Swift. He has won that battle. Again, that Staff Sergeant Sean Swint with 8 U.S. Army. United States Army Reserve Command for Soldier. So, yeah, he's, uh, he's one of my soldiers. How do you feel like he might do uh, in this tournament? Uh, Barger is fast, strong, and young, so uh, I believe he'll do very well. Do very well. And do you think uh, how do you, the, the U.S. Um, Army Modern Combatives Program uh, is essential here to, uh, to the Army um, training? How do you feel about that? How do you feel like these kind of competitions help enforce that or reinforce that uh, with Army training? Oh, I think it reinforces a lot, you know, it, it instills in the soldiers, you know, uh, motivation, um, dedication, you know, they have to fall through, it's, it, it's, it supports physical fitness, so, uh, you know, I think it, uh, a wide spectrum, it, it covers a lot of it, it's very good, very good, it's a, if you're not dedicated, motivated, you're not going to excel in combatants. So. Well, thank you, Command Sergeant Major, appreciate that. <laughs> All right, looks like we have... Another match starting. All right. All right. So, can you give us 
us a play-by-play -play on this one. Over here. All right, sure. So right now, Red went for the takedown, ended up in that non-dominant position. So the man on top is going to get the, the, the points for that. How many points is that? He's getting three points because he ended up in that non-dominant position. Now, if he would have ended up in clearing the legs, he would have got the four points. What's the minimum amount of points you can get? Minimum amount of points. There, okay, for four, uh, you get four points for the dominant takedown. You get three points for non-dominant. A sweep of any kind, you're going to get three points. Um, the minimum of our points is probably going to be one point, and that's for passivity. If the man on top disengages to stand back up so he can try and get another takedown and get more points, he's going to get that one point given to the other competitor because he's being passive. Uh, can you ex can you kind of give us a, a little bit of insight on, on the energy and the strength needed to win these kind of competitions or even to okay. you know, take? Well, your, your strength and stamina are definitely going to be important, but the stamina is definitely going to be a, a little bit more important than the strength. With the, the techniques that we teach, they're based off of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so uh, that, that whole technique is developed for a smaller man to be able to overcome a, a stronger, larger competitor. So that stamina to keep going through is going to be important. When you start using more of your muscle trying to manhandle someone, you're going to burn that energy and, and uh, start to lose that, that strength and speed. So that the guy that keeps a steady pace and, and uses his techniques, those techniques that we teach in the MACP program, you're going to find that that's the guy that's going to come out on top. Looks like we have a specialist, Dusty Edwards, representing U.S. Army Medical Command. Uh, he's a medical laboratory specialist assigned to the Armed Services Whole Blood Processing Laboratory East. And that's against Corporal Barger, representing U.S. Army Reserve Command, and he is an MP. Corporal Barger is in the blue belt. Specialist Edwards is in the red belt. Looks like Corporal Barger is in the dominant position right now. Corporal Barger is with the 303rd Military Police Company. Uh-oh. Corporal Barger with the 200th Military Police Command at 303rd Military Police Company, U.S. Army Reserve.
referee is calling the timeout to move them back on the mat because they were creeping off the mat. They will take up the same position as before. And we begin. All right, so the man on top in red, he's trying to step over and get into mount. That's the most dominant position we have uh, besides the rear mount, which is when you have the back of your opponent. That's a nice little transition there. He just, he used his feet to arch up and over, getting his opponent over the back. He's, looks like his, uh, his, his opponent might have a, almost a little arm and triangle choke going on, but it doesn't look like he's gonna be able to pull it off because the towel's about to come in, and that's time. All right, thank you who the winner of this match is. Okay, looks like Looks like Corporal Barger, 200th MP Command, with the 303rd Military Police Company in the blue belt, has won this round. He will advance to the next. Roger that, roger that, Commander Sergeant Major. All right, how do you feel about the event so far? I think this is a great event, um, outstanding event. It's probably one of the best events that the Army has to offer um, throughout the year. And uh, who, who, are you, uh, who are you here for? Who's your soldier? Uh, uh, your Staff Sergeant Brown and uh, Sergeant uh, Kitchen. And they're doing an outstanding job. What do you think about the uh, Army Combatants Program and, and how, it's, uh, how this uh, tournament right here can help uh, in, enhance the training for that? Well, I, I think that it gives the uh, Army across the board an opportunity um, for all the units to see um, um, how the Army or how each unit compete uh, in combatants. Um, it's a motivational uh, tool. Um, it's a training. It's a uh, physical fitness uh, um, platform. I think it's good for the Army to use this and grow and develop this more. All right. Thank you very much, Commander Sergeant Major. We appreciate you. that. Guys are feisty. Oh, he's going for a takedown. All right, so I'm well if you can tell us what's going on right now. All right, so now the man on top, he just passed through the half guard and he's in a full mountain. Looks like he's going for a lapel choke or collar choke right here. 
The man on bottom is defending pretty good, keeping his hands close and tight. You want to make sure that you're keeping the elbows in to protect you from the man on top sliding up. And looks like he had a key lock on that opposite side, but he ended up getting a submission. All right, so we have some, some general rules. We gotta make sure that we're not covering the mouth of the opponent when our hands are in their face. We're protecting the eyes, making sure they're not poking and gouging at the eyes. Um, one of the techniques that we, we make sure that they're not gonna do is uh, familiar in MMA, uh, made, made popular by Rampage Jackson, that spike from the guard. We, we make sure we re reiterate that, uh, that when they get in the guard, there's a tendency to stand up to try and break that guard and maybe slam the opponent down uh, forcefully to make sure that happens, but we don't let them do that. If they, if they do pick up to try and break the guard, they have to place them flat on their back. If, uh, if they ended up spiking them, getting them on the back of their neck or their head, it's a DQ and the match is over. So are there penalties or is it automatic disqualification? When there's a safety violation like that, it's a disqualification and the, the person that committed it loses. So there's no incentive to do that? No, there's definitely not. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. If you are just tuning in to us, this is the Army Combatives Tournament here at the Army Best Warrior Competition at Fort Lee, Virginia, 2011. Looks like we have Staff Sergeant Santiago versus Staff Sergeant Castillo. Castillo is in the red belt. Santiago is in the blue. Right now, I have the 2010 Army Best Warrior Comp uh, it's Soldier of the Year. Right now, you're an NCO, but Soldier of the Year. We have a Sergeant Sherry Gallagher. Is that right? Yes, All right. How are you doing? I'm doing great today. Thank you very much. How does it feel coming back and seeing uh, the 2011 competitors uh, um, compete? It's a lot of fun seeing it from this perspective because now we're just out here encouraging everyone. Uh, the amount of preparation that they put into being out here—they're just amazing people. Now we've seen you uh, here all week. Uh, you've been out to every event. Uh, what exactly are you doing uh, for the competitor? The main thing, I'm just trying to get to know the competitors, kind of encourage them throughout the board and, and keep, keep their motivation up. And you've been offering good advice, I, I bet, right? I, I've been doing my best, yes, Sergeant. Excellent, excellent. Right, thank you very much, Sergeant Gallagher. We appreciate it. All right. Looks like Sergeant Santiago won that blue. He moves on to the next round. Over here we have Specialist Casey Hardigan, representing the National Capital Region with the 1st Battalion, 3rd Infantry Regiment. That's the old guard, and he is in the red belt. And he is going against Specialist Christopher Side, representing the U.S. Army Pacific Command. 
And he is assigned to the 1st and 1st Air Defense Artillery Battalion in Okinawa, Japan. That was Sergeant uh, Christopher's side, not special Sergeant. All right, Sergeant, can you give us a play-by-play? -play? Sure, all right. You got Red, he's in uh, inside Blue's guard right now. Looks like Blue's trying to switch. Uh, he's got a triangle attempt on right now. If he could push that arm across the body, he's grabbing the foot, pulling it in. He needs to get that body across, he, the arm across his body, start pulling down on the head. It's good technique right there. He's just need to lock it in. See, and that's the, the guard, the guard slam that I told you about, but he landed flat on his back, so it's okay. It was, it was close, it was close. If he would have ended up on the back of his neck, that referee would have had to stop that. What does it take to be a referee? What level of uh, training do you have to have to be a referee? When we go through level three and four, we learn how to do the referee. We learn the point system. In level two, you start learning the point system. You run your own uh, tournament inside that level two. But at level three and level four, that's when you're actually certified to run these type of tournaments. And right here, what we have now is uh, Soren Ka from the Warrior Training Center here at Fort Lee. They're both installation uh, combatives instructors, and they're both level fours. And you're out of Fort Bragg, is that right? Yes, I am. I'm out of Fort Bragg, and I'm also a level four. Uh, I was up here at Fort Lee, installation combatives instructor, and uh, they invited me to come back and, and help them out this year. So it's a, it a good experience. So you're here for the, uh, for, the, uh, com for the actual event, right? You're here just for the best world competition, is that right? Yes, I'm just up here helping... Uh, I, I've ran this program the last three years, and uh, I guess I did a good enough job. They invited me back. Awesome. Thank you. Call time on that. We're going to announce the winner. Looks like Sergeant Side is taking that. He is the winner. Sergeant Side. it up here let's find out who is oh we got we got corporal barter coming up he's this will be his third match he is in the red belt again he's with 200th mp command and that's uh corporal ryan barter 303rd military police company 200th mp command and he will be going up against staff sergeant connell that's uh, Staff Sergeant Adam Connolly, representing the U.S. Army Pacific Command, 2nd Battalion, 11th Field Artillery Regiment, in Schofield Barracks, Hawaii. Refs patting him down. Staff Sergeant Connolly in the blue belt, Corporal Barger in the red belt. Takedown. Corporal Barger is on top. Looks like he's in dominant position. Okay, 
Can you give us the play-by-play -play on this one? Bro? Sure. All right, so we got Red. He's in side control. And look, he's going for a mount attempt. And they got into a scramble. He's losing position. He's trying to get, and now he's got the full mount. That's four points right there for that full mount. And you see, as I was saying before, he's wanting to get high. The man on bottom needs to get his elbows down to protect him from getting, uh, getting that high mount. Right now, it looks like the man on top, Red, he looks like he's trying to isolate that arm. See, we teach a technique in, uh, in the level two MACP where if a man has his arm around your neck, you're gonna pin that arm down with your head, put your other hand in the hip, and arch over to try and get out of that non-dominant position into a dominant position. Now, is that a hard position to get out of? That is one of the hardest positions to get out of, uh, but we do teach about three or four different techniques of how to get out of that position in level one and two. And all these competitors should have at least level one combative training, is that? Once, once these competitors start doing their boards back at their home station, uh, it's, it's, it's a part of it to get level one and level two because they know that coming to this level of event that this is going to be part of the event, so they get trained up accordingly. Thank you, sir. Looks like they're going to announce the winner. Referee's going to decide. Corporal Barger, 200th MP Command, is the winner, representing the U.S. Army Reserves. All right. Bring it back to uh, Sergeant Wells right here. Can you explain the difference? Uh, I, there's a couple different programs, uh, combative programs. Is that right? Right, yeah. Uh, we have the Modern Army Combatives Program, which is taught to all the regular army soldiers, any soldier can get that, uh, that training in the Modern Army Combatives Program. But in, in the soft community, in the Special Forces community, we have what's called the Special Operation Combatives Program. That's taught to all, all the, the Special Forces groups and those operators. And it was created by my friend over here, Mr. Greg Thompson. Mr. Thompson, how are you doing? Wonderful. Wonderful. Can you explain to us a little bit about the, the program that, that you run that you created? Yes. Well, basically, SOT P was designed to bridge the gap between foundational training, MMA, MACP, and to help the soldiers to do cuffing, prisoner handling, detaining, and fighting and kick. Focus also on um, scenario-based training, what's going on downrange right now, way the soldiers are being attacked, and create scenarios and evolve basically combatives from that. So, so would you say this is something that the, the techniques that you're teaching is something that the conventional uh, forces should also learn? Yes, a lot, of the, a lot of the cuffing, prisoner handling, detaining, and fighting and kit that the Army's using right now in the uh, Modern Army Combatives Program was developed in SOT-P. So they adopted the post frame hook. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We have a specialist, Dusty Edwards. He's representing U.S. Army Medical Command. And he is fighting against PFC Thomas Hauser, U.S. Army Forces Command. And he's with the 56, 563rd Military Police Company 91st Military Police Battalion out of Fort Drum, New York.
Uh, four points given to Red. Two points. Blue takes two points. Ten seconds left. Ten seconds left. And that's the match. Four points given to Blue at the last minute. Looks like it'll go to decision. like Hauser has won. Blue belt, Hauser. That's PFC Thomas Hauser, U.S. Army Forces Command. Wins that tournament. And he's got a little fan base out there. All right. Going back over here to this match. Specialist Bernard Quackenbush. She's with Army Materiel Command. Into red is specialist Jonathan Melendez. He's with Installation Management Command. He's a military policeman assigned to the Provost Marshal Office at the U.S. Army Garrison in the Netherlands. Ten seconds left. The referee has ten seconds left on the clock. Looks like it was a submission. There is a quite a, a size difference there, but here in this tournament, size does not matter. All right. Looks like Specialist Bernard Quackenbush, Army Material Command, has won that one. Well, we have Staff Sergeant Samuel Winslow with U.S. Army Special Operations Command. In the red, we have Sergeant John Colmenares with the 8th U.S. Army. He is in the red. All right, Sergeant, can you uh, tell us about the the, uh, the offensive, defensive, like the passive versus the aggressive? Uh... Okay. So, so right now, the man on bottom technically is in a dominant position. 
say say they're back in uh, the blue is in mount. He's in a dominant position, but he's not attempting any submissions. He's not attempting to improve his position at all. That's uh, that's going to be stalling. And what the what the referee would do is give the person on bottom one point. He's going to warn the man on top. Say you need to you need to move. You need to improve your position. You need to attack. And if he doesn't. He's going to say, I'm going to award the other guy a point for stalling. So whoever's on top in the dominant position, holding that position just because they're up on points and they're winning, if they want to sit there in that position, the referee will start awarding one point at a time to the other person. So this gives an uh, incentive for the opponents to keep moving, not just to hold and lock down a position, right? Exactly. We don't, we don't want a stronger, bigger guy to just be able to get on top and, and smother his opponent. We want them, we want to enforce the techniques that we've taught. So uh, when, they, when they get into that position, if they're up on points, they want to hold the position. That's why we discourage that with those stalling points. Sounds like a good way to make sure that everybody's always active. It's good for TV, too. What do we have? What's going on right now? Right now, uh, well, we got 10 seconds left, and the man in blue is on top. He's in side control, and he just got over to mount. You have to have both knees down on the ground over the top of the opponent to make sure you get those four points, and he did. Hopefully, that was enough to get him the win. All right. Let's see who it is. This one will go to decision. The judges are tallying up the points right now. All right, looks like Staff Sergeant Samuel Winslow in the blue belt with U.S. Special Operations Command has won that bout. And the crowd goes wild. All right, let's swing the camera over here. We have uh, Sergeant First Class Stackpole, the old guard representing the National Capital Region. He is in the red belt. In the blue belt, we have Staff Sergeant Jonathan Castillo. He is with the Fort Polk Non-Commissioned Officers Academy, the NCO Academy of Fort Polk. Let's see. Sergeant Castillo is on the dominant position. Everybody in the stands is a coach today. All right, Sergeant, can you tell us he's grabbing his collar? Can you explain that to us? So right now, he, he, actually, he's sinking it in right now. He's going for a lapel choke. He's got that, that left forearm pressed right up against the carotid artery, pulling down with the other arm, pressing his forearm right into the carotid artery. He can't handle too much of that. It's going to stop that blood flow to the brain. And he might be out. Nope, he's good. Looks like he won that one by submission. That's Sergeant First Class Stackpole. National Capital Region won that turn bout. Right, we're going to go over here to the tournament board. Kind of see what's sorry, see what's going on over here. Looks like right now at this round of the tournament, we have uh, Husho versus Santiago. Miller versus Corbin. Uh, the winner of the Hargaden side match will face up against Swint. Lindbergh versus Barger. That should be coming up. And that is the winner's bracket. The uh, losers bracket. 
We have Williams will fight the winner of the Conley Kitchen Tournament. Stackpole has advanced on to, to compete against whoever the winner with the Brown McBroom bout will be. We also have Learman and Winslow coming up next, as well as Quackenbush and Hauser. All right, let's take it back to the mat, see what's going on. All right, the referee has called time. We have Conley in the blue. Staff Sergeant Adam Conley, U.S. Army Pacific Command, is in the blue. Sorry, he's in the red. In the red, we have Specialist Brandon Kitchen. He's with U.S. Army Space and Missile Defense Command. We just interviewed his Command Sergeant Major, who's out here. Cheering for him. Most of the command sergeant majors of the commands are out here cheering on their competitors for the 2011 Best Army Army Best Warrior Competition here at Fort Lee, Virginia. Four points blue. Did not get out of it. Three points blue. Specialist Kitchen got three points. We have some of the competitor sponsors off to the side coaching them. They've been with them throughout this whole competition. Judges have called 10 seconds left in this bout. Let's see if we can get a submission. No time. Judges thrown in the towel. This will go to decision. Looks like Specialist Kitchen has won that one. That's Specialist Brandon Kitchen, U.S. Army Space and Missile Defense Command, won that bout. He will move on to the next round. Looks like Sergeant First Class Stackpole is getting his red belt back on. Just finished up another bout. Looks like he's up again.
again, uh, for those of you who are just coming into our live streaming webcast, we are here at Fort Lee, Virginia for the 2011 Army Best Warrior Competition to see who the 2011 NCO of the Year and Soldier of the Year is. We are right here in the field here at Fort Lee, uh, day five of the events. We have the Combatives Tournament going on. We are now going to watch Sergeant First Class Stackpole representing the North In the red belt, Sergeant First Class Stackpole. And in the blue belt, we have Brown. Staff Sergeant Brown is with the U.S. Army Space and Missile Defense Command. And uh, Sergeant First Class Stackpole is with the National Capital Region Old Guard. Looks like Sergeant First Class Stackpole has a cheering section. The crowd loves him. Will he be the winner? And he goes for a takedown. That's Sergeant First Class Stackpole in the red belt. Again, old guard. Four points for Staff Sergeant Brown. Looks like looks like that was over. That that would be submission. Winner by submission, Blue Staff Sergeant Brown, U.S. Army Missile Defense Command. Wells, uh, you know, in these kind of combative tournaments, uh, get, people got their adrenaline pumped. Uh, people are are excited. Sometimes it can get a little heated, right? Uh, how do these competitors? Uh, how should they be, be, or how do they act when they walk off the match, win or lose? Well, as you can see right over here, uh, when the competitors get together, you know, we're all brothers. We all get on the mat. When we get on the mat, we're gonna go hard. We're gonna give it our all. But when it's all said and done. The referee brings us together, we shake hands, we hug it out because it's, it's one team, one fight. We're all one army. We're all here to support each other. You know, you got units, uh, guys representing USASOC fighting each other. Afterwards, they give each other a big hug. You know, it's, it's, it's professionalism. That's, you know, something that we teach a profession of arms, you know, military brotherhood. You know, we're, we're here, we're going to go hard, we're going to fight each other. But then at the end of the day, we're all one team and, and we're going to support each other. All right, absolutely. So, again, this is a professional. Uh, atmosphere here. Uh, there are no hard feelings, win or lose. Although the winners may be happier, there are still no hard feelings. Everyone's hugging it out at the end. All right, looks like we're taking. Uh, we have uh, PFC Williams, youngest uh, competitor here at the 2011 Army Best Warrior Competition. He's the youngest. And he is in the red belt. He's with the 173rd Airborne out of Vicenza, Italy. And in the blue belt, we have Specialist Kitchen again. Representing the U.S. Army Space and Missile Defense Command. Looks like the referee is going to stop that. Winner by submission, Private First Class Williams, Travis Williams, representing United States Army Europe in the red belt.
for those of you who are just For those of you just uh, tuning into our live streaming webcast, we are again here at Fort Lee, Virginia. 2011 Army Best Warrior Competition, day five of the events. And this is the Combatives Tournament. One of the most highly anticipated events of the entire tournament. Right. Looks like right here in the red belt coming up, we have a PFC Thomas Hauser with U.S. Army Forces Command. He's a military policeman with the 563rd Military Police Company, 91st Military Police Battalion, Fort Drum, New York, versus uh, Specialist Zachary Learman. He's with U.S. Army Special Operations Command. He is assigned to Alpha Company, 2nd Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. And he's coming... Specialist Learman is just coming off another bout, so he's going immediately back on for this one. All right, the referee's patting him down. Red belt, PFC Hauser, blue belt, specialist Learman. And here we go. PFC Hauser in the red belt is in the dominant position. Bouts last three minutes. The normal time is six minutes, but because of the size of this tournament, they are one three minute bout. Two points, red belt. That's PFC Thomas Hauser with two points. Getting close to the edge, the referee will pause it and bring them back if they do come out. There we go. We have the sponsors off to the side, coaching them from the side. Four points, PFC Hauser again. We're going to bring in Sergeant Wells again to give us the play-by-play. -play. All right, so uh, you got the man on top in red. He's, he's got him mounted. The man on bottom is trying to hip thrust out of there. The man on top, it looks like he's, uh, he's working the arms. He's working the arms real hard trying to get a key lock here. Working for that bent arm bar. Now he's trying to step over the head for that straight arm bar. Tucks back into mount. He's working hard on those arms, trying to get those arms down. If he pins that arm down to the ground, can come over the top, he'd have a bent arm bar. Looks like we're going to another decision. Yeah. 
Looks like it's going to decision. And this bout goes to PFC Thomas Hauser, U.S. Army Forces Command. Goes to the next round. Sergeant Wells, uh, what would you say is the most complex uh, move here uh, for modern Army combatives? Well, in the modern Army combative system, probably in, in, in level one, most complex moves that we have are, would be a straight arm bar. What you saw back there, the bent arm bar, those are two of the, the submission te techniques that we teach. And then we go in and throw a rear naked choke. Everybody knows the rear naked choke. Um, and we, we work the collars for a collar choke. So co a cross collar choke is uh, the two, t uh, two chokes that we teach and the two arm bars that we teach in level one. So those are the basic attacks that they'll learn. So as far as complex, that comes later down the line in the, in the higher levels. All right. Thank you. All right. We're here. Command Sergeant Major Jenkins, how are you doing this uh, afternoon? We're here at, uh, excellent, we're here at Fort Lee. Uh, you, this, is your, this is your neighborhood, this is your home. We're, we're doing the uh, 2011 uh, Army Best Warrior Competition here, day five of the events. Uh, how, how's it going so far, Command Sergeant Major? Uh, uh, actually, it's going great. Uh, you, you just witnessed some great competitors that have been competing all week. These, show, these soldiers are showing you that they have a lot of intestinal fortitude to continue to, at this level. Now, uh, Command Sergeant Major, a lot goes into this uh, competition. We know uh, a lot of people are here for only five days, but you, you guys are out here, you know, months and months in advance to getting things done. How, how do you do that? How much, how much uh, planning goes into this uh, kind of event, the whole event in general? Basically, this is one-year planning <clears throat> operations. We identify personnel to uh, start the planning sale, and they plan for this for one year. I get the um, instructors about, about six months out, and I start training them. Uh, how many years has uh, the Army Best Warrior Competition uh, has been held here at uh, Fort Lee, uh, Virginia? Sir? This is the 10th year of the uh, competition. And they keep coming back here, so it must be good. This is definitely a great venue. We've seen a lot of great things. And, and everyone out there, if you're going online, going on divotshub.net, uh, you can see all the footage that we've had for the last five days. It's, it's a great event. We appreciate everything you've done here. Uh, Command Sergeant Major, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hey, uh, I got some, this guy right here, you need to interview right there. See him right here? First Sergeant, come up here. Yeah, First Sergeant Space Adams. Command, uh, give us some insight on your two soldiers. Over there Space you Command. have two soldiers, looks like they're doing pretty good. They keep advancing. Uh, who are you here to uh, um, support, First Sergeant? Staff Sergeant Andrew Brown and, Staff and Sergeant Brandon Kitchens, both from the uh, United States Army Space and Missile Defense Command, Army Forces Strategic Command. How's the how's the tournament going so far? I Man, watching the best warriors the United States Army has to offer, go against each other, figure out who's the best of the best. It's just an awesome experience. And uh, and how are how are your guys doing? My guys are doing awesome. They've won all their fights. Uh, the Staff Sergeant Brown's on his third or his fourth fight right now, and Sergeant Kitchens is on his third fight. You've been following your guys uh, all week here, and. Uh, you have you been to every event? or I've been to most of the events, yes. Right. Very tough, challenging events that have definitely pushed our soldiers to the limits. Right. And how do you feel your guys have done uh, in the last five days? I think they've done outstanding. All right, excellent. Thank you very much, First Sergeant. We appreciate that. Great day, cool. All right, we are here again at the, at the 2011 Army Best Warrior Competition here at Fort Lee, Virginia. They're taking a little break. It's mandatory. they got to uh, let the guys rest up a little bit. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Looks like the guys are taking a break. We're going to go over here and talk to PFC Williams right here, the youngest competitor. How, how are you feeling so far? Feeling pretty good, Sarn. Really? Yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. This is, it's a nice way to end it, so. Yeah. Is this one of the anticipated events for you? Not at this point, Sarn. Uh, 